Welcome to our today's class. Um, I warmly welcome to all audience and the people who are watching this um, live recording on their uh, off offline channels. Uh, so we are in episode number two. And uh, before I go to episode number two, which is about the pre-modern era, and we particularly discuss about the three, uh, three things uh, in pre-modern era about what is God in pre-modern, what people used to consider God as, and still they do, uh, how the language was important or unimportant on that time, and also the spirituality, uh, how it used to exist and how people view in that pre-modern era. Um, the last week we discussed about our main topic uh, of three eras, which are pre-modern, modern, and post-modern. Um, and we did discuss about uh, how uh, in these three eras, the concept of uh, God and language and spirituality was viewed. We we did discuss quite uh, uh, importantly and uh, with convincing discussion uh, as well that uh, in pre-modern era, the tradition, uh, divine authority or religion uh, and uh, language was very separate. Uh, the, it was under something uh, cosmological order. It everything is happening. So in this, uh, that was predominant uh, in that uh, thing in pre-modern. However, in modern, the rationality, uh, science, uh, individualism, personal belief, they used to dominant in those centuries. Still, uh, it is in, we are under influence of this era. And then uh, oppo opposition of both modern and pre-modern, particular about the modern uh, is the postmodern, in which pluralism, decentralization, subjectivity, relativism, the fluid spirituality, uh, Personal God, uh, its concept of our personal God is uh, is there, and that uh, postmodern era has already started. So you can go to my YouTube channel. I will actually record, uh, upload that recording which we did uh, discuss last week. Uh, so let's go. Um, and before uh, we go to today's topic about pre-modern era. I would like to tell about myself. Uh, I do often uh, write and speak on developmental psychology, subjects, uh, personal development, uh, applied philosophy, science, spirituality, and enlightenment, uh, sociology, and indirectly it is related with business as well. Uh, because business means abundance, uh, wealth, which is very important, which uh, also help us to uh, feel and create a happiness. So I do often read uh, and write uh, and upload my stuff on maratibalishad.com, which is from my name. So, so let's uh, go and we will discuss today pre-modern before we go, I would like to tell you why you should attend it. Basically, uh, we want to explore the how the ideas of the God, language, and spirituality have shifted over the time so that we should locate ourselves where we do exist, where it happens, where we, we need to... Uh, so where, where we basically locate ourselves 
in in historical context in modern context and uh, also the era which is coming so that's important uh, we will engage in discussion and uh, that discussion will uh, have a lot of reflections of philosophical stuff uh, historical context and also the cultural uh, connotation we will do and uh, what is the benefit of this the all this discussion that is all about the personal intellectual development uh, it will help us to change our belief uh, by learning our by changing our paradigm of that era which we uh, study and we do so hopefully that you will enjoy uh, this quick study it is a very very brief study these are the very very vast subject of course i will not cover everything and i cannot cover but um it will be covering a lot of things which uh, uh, at least a modern or postmodern mind uh, should know about uh, all these three eras in terms of god uh, language and spirituality so let's go today and we will do pre-modern era okay um so in pre-modern era we will explore how the pre-modern era viewed uh these concept and how they shaped the human life my life your life and my society where i born where i built uh so first we will learn about how the god was viewed what was a god and uh, actually what is god in that time and people involved and uh, super believer of god on that time so uh, i want to tell that the god was seen as the central authority and creator for all all okay uh, of course that's uh, we all know through our childhood and through how we we learn these notions in in our um, daily life since we are taught in our school our parents taught us our uh, old people they told us uh, society our media uh, our old we are within our god god paradigm okay uh, divine influence was believed to shape everything from nature to societal norms okay so only god ha god has created everything it was existing already in nature and now it is part of our society it is part of myself I example the pharaohs in ancient egypt god as ruler in medieval christianity so usually the kings and queens and pharaohs they used to consider that they work as a divine as a god's power and god's power polytheism in hinduism monotheism in judaism christianity and islam so they are because they are predominant uh, religion from all ages almost from last uh, two three thousand years uh, before till today so that's why they the god concept is very very important in religion they all religion stands with the, the central and only figure related with god so this is something which uh, we need to pre modern era was super uh, uh was a uh, super god central era okay uh, the god can be called krishna uh, abraham some people also say allah so the muslim i do also uh, Allah is my God uh, as a Muslim. Uh, in Christianity, God uh, was also uh, 
transformed into human and he came and he comes on our planet Earth to help people, to go to spread and give the love of the God. So that basically is the main central theme of pre modern era how God was viewed. So uh, we we can read this uh, in detail. So God as a central and absolute uh, in the modern uh, pre-modern era, believe in God or gods was central part of life. God was often seen as the ultimate authority, the creator of the universe, the source of all truth, morality, and religious and spiritual system dominated God's uh, people's worldview with the religious institutions like churches, temples, and mosques holding significant power. Of course, that's we. So God is absolute. So that we studying. So uh, I'm searching my picture is not coming for some reason. Okay. So uh, transcendence and in uh, God was typically viewed as both transcendent existing beyond the physical world and immanent involved in the kings of the world. This is evident in monotheistic tradition like Christianity, Islam, and Judaism, where God is seen as omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. In polytheistic or animistic tradition, God and spirits were believed to be involved in all aspects of nature of life. So this is uh, God is is some is transcendent power, transcendent beyond the human intellect, beyond our solar system, beyond our cosmology, cosmological objects and all creation which we know. God is beyond from that. So, and also more importantly, God is doing everything in this, in this whole universe. That is more important. God is not only static or uh, still uh, in being. In fact, God is doing everything, including what we are talking right now. God is doing everything what we know. This is also uh, immanence uh, being is. Okay. In existing world uh, and beyond that world. The next uh, in this concept is uh, divine order. In this era, God or gods provided order to the cosmos, human, human society, and morality. Events in, in the world were often interpreted in a sign of divine will. And people believed that adhering to divine law was essential for personal and societal well-being. So everything is under order. Everything is happening for some reason. And that reason is God knows everything. God is doing everything. Even any event is happening in this world is uh, interpreted in, as sign of divine will. Whatever is happening good or bad or um, then the more important uh, is uh, is my favorite as well is mysticism and direct experience while institutional religion dominated uh, there were also mystical traditions such as sufism christian uh, mysticism and kabbalism that emphasized a personal direct experience of god Mystics sought to experience the divine in an intimate, experiential way beyond formal religious structure. So this is something which is uh, very important. 
So God was a, a central figure for whole society, for all world, especially the religion uh, was a very established institution. However, within that, there is there was opposition of mystics within all uh, religion, in Muslim, in Islam, uh, Sufi, Sufism, they uh, basically called those people who do not follow as such uh, religious laws which people made, but uh, they believe they can they can experience the God themselves. They don't need religion to experience God. And, and uh, that is uh, basically a conflict between the mainstream religious people and mystic people. For, from forever, I think, uh, the religions institution were formed, then this mysticism were also uh, seen as opposition. And it exists in all religion. In Christianity, uh, people who are going towards Bible or uh, bookish uh, believer, uh, they are they more uh, experience the God or Jesus in person. Uh, in Hinduism, oh, sorry, uh, in Hinduism there is. Uh, the yogis or uh, spiritual Hindu uh, sanat, we call it, or yogis, typical word. They, uh, they are not part of mainstream Hinduism, but they are spiritual mystic and they want to contact God directly. Uh, so, uh, so they, this is the uh, modern, uh, sorry, pre-modern era. Pre-modern era, we, it was before 16th century. Pre-modern era was uh, uh, before 1600. So, yeah, that uh, for your just uh, basic understand. So, let's go and we discuss how the language was seen in pre-modern era. So sacred language in pre-modern era or sacred language, how do you want to pronounce it? So sacred uh, ling language in pre-modern era was considered divine and mystical and believed in whole power. Sacred languages include Sanskrit, Latin, Arabic. Mantras, chants, and prayers were key to connecting with the divine. So, yeah, so they, that is the role, uh, that is the definition of uh, how the language was viewed in pre modern before 1600 years. Okay, um, and uh, let's do a little bit in more details about language. So, language were very inspired because they believe that the language is from the God and it is sacred because it is from the God. In the pre-modern world, language was often seen as divinely inspired, especially in religious context. Language was regarded as a medium through which divine truths, uh, traditions, and cultural wisdoms were conveyed. Uh, sacred languages such as Latin in the Christian Church, Arabic in Islam, or Sanskrit in Hinduism were seen as immutable, perfect, and holy. So this is also in this. And also, in terms of uh, language, uh, oral traditions is uh, super important. Uh, you know that the Bible, uh, Old Testament, they over, uh, were written uh, or compiled 
under oral tradition. So he's saying that the language played a crucial role in oral traditions. Much of the movement which was passed down verbally before the widespread using of writing. So this era valued language as a means of preserving the tradition, history, and religious beliefs. And heroical and fixed. In many pre modern societies, language was formal and rigid, reflecting the hierarchical structure of society itself. Mm. Written language was often accessible only to the elite, and there was only little room for individual interpretation or diver divergence from established norms. That is also critical from the modern and pre-modern era as well, that God is always uh, with the elite or rich people can write uh, the sacred literature and uh, that happens also. A lot of divine uh, books or scriptures were written down. Uh, that is one thing. Uh, the people who know these uh, old uh, hierarchical uh, uh, I mean uh, old, sorry People who knows all these uh, divine texts, they were leaders on that society on those times, and they were have so much influence. So that's why they all were attached with elite people uh, and groups of, of their society. Because the language was very formal, anybody who was uh, uh, writing, involved in writing or reading, they were very respectful. Um, and also, uh, uh, it was become, becoming an authority. Uh, and all norms which are established, they were being written. And anybody who does against these uh, established uh, um, norms, they were uh, ridiculed or looked down upon, and that uh, is because of the literature that was being written. So written language is, is the main important thing. Written language, that's uh, uh, written language is also we have in form of Bible, Old Testament, uh, Vedas, uh, in Hindu scripture, Holy Quran, and Hadith in the sayings of uh, Holy Prophet uh, Muhammad's uh, own uh, lives uh, and whereabouts of his uh, uh, everything what he did or say through different uh, channels in form of Hadith compilation is also written in a written from that that's very important role in Islamic oral tradition of that. So that was the uh, um, role of language in the modern era. Do you have any question uh, on this? And you can write your name and any question or comment, I will try to reply or answer in this. So, and the last. Uh, part of today is spirituality. What was the spirituality in the pre-modern era in daily life? The spirituality inter intertwined with everyday life, guiding routines and laws, concepts like karma, divine will and God's grace shaped action, uh, festivals, rituals and prayers structured the year calendar, for uh, example, medieval church determined cycle of cycles of work and rest. So, how the spirituality was in pre-modern era that we are going to study now. 
So let's do. Number one, there was a little intervention, uh, opposition with religion, inter with religion. In the pre-modern era, spirituality was almost entirely tied to former religious tradition. So anybody who was spiritual means he was also religious. The idea of spirituality outside of religious structure was as religious institutions dominated spiritual life and provided the framework for understanding the divine and the soul. So spirituality and religion were almost one thing. So it means on that time, who was religion, religious, it means quite likely they, he or she will have a spiritual experience as well. Okay. Or uh, they, they have to be a spiritual if they follow any religion. So, uh, but uh, people, really less uh, likely percentage that people were spiritual outside religious institution at that time in pre-modern. Not now. Now is much more flexible. People are very spiritual outside religion as well, uh, but not in that. The cosmic order and rituals. Spirituality was largely about maintaining harmony with the cosmic or divine order through rituals, ceremonies, and moral codes dictated by religious authorities. The spiritual and material worlds were closely connected and there was little distinction between one's spiritual life and just observance. Yeah, so spiritual and material world both were closely connected. Okay. Um, and there was a little distinction between spiritual life and religious uh, paradigm. Um, it's very, very important. Uh, the spiritual and material world were closely connected. Uh, where material world it means the world which we are seeing and spiritual which is unseen. So both are very co closely connected. Maybe people were more pure on that time. The pure, very religious people were very spiritual and very spiritual people were very religious on that time uh, in spirituality. What about mysticism itself? While most spirituality was bound to religious institution, Certain mystics with these traditions, such as Sufis in Islam, Christian mystics or Kabbalists in Judaism, explored personal direct experience of the divine that went beyond institutional doctrine, but these still remained within the framework of their respective religion. It still exists, by the way, uh, that uh, uh, these Sufi, like me, myself, I I follow Sufism in Islam, which mostly have contradiction with the mainstream Sharia Islam. But they have to attach with one of the religion anyway, because the framework of religion is so strong, so integrated. Still, in today's 2021st century, we are. So that is uh, spirituality, how it was in pre-modern era. So overall, what I have uh, learned and I want to share that pre-modern era was basically uh, pre-modern era mysticism was very strongly connected with religion. Okay. Uh, So, and, and spiritual people have the same God concept which the religion have. So that is the our sin. So in the last, uh, we will summarize the thing that we learned. How do pre-modern beliefs differ from Buddhist beliefs? 
I'm sorry, this is what we can implement in our life today, or we can see. So what do you think? Can you answer in, in, in the comment below? How do pre-modern beliefs differ from today's views? Uh, think about the role of God, language, and spirituality in modern life. Uh, and discussion we can do. How did belief in higher power influence pre-modern societies? Very much. Very much higher power because people were so religious and that's why the religion has to be strong until philosophers start to, starts to come after 16th century and they brought modern class. So that is the wrap up and next class uh, uh, today we explored pre-modern views on God, language and spirituality. Next week uh, we will uh, shift uh, discuss the shift which was brought by science and nationality and uh, uh, and individualism in era people used to call it martyr. Okay, so um, you stay tuned with uh, this series, uh, episode number uh, three. We will learn. So join us for a deep look at how these changes transform beliefs. So I'm very excited for next era because next era is the modern era, especially. How the belief system from pre modern to modern uh, and religious influence start to slow down. Uh, philosophers and spiritual people start to evolve. Um, it impacted on freedom and a lot of. Uh, great moments in human history and which we still going on until we are also at the same time post passing through postmodern era as well. Learn as well. So so that is um, so thank you for uh, watching this episode uh, online lifelong study circle uh, where I bring a lot of courses, book studies for free of charge. So every Sunday and Saturday uh, we do. Uh, but before we used to do every Sunday, but now I am doing on every Saturday. So uh, yeah, you can join me. Uh, and just 60 minutes can change your life. I, I will help you. It, because it is so helping to my life as well. Okay. Okay. So thank you so much for joining me and see you next Saturday with the new topic of modern uh, era. And you can join my YouTube channel and also some social media channel whenever you write. Just my name. My name is very unique. Marwati Ali Shad. Uh, you will search on Google. Uh, I'm on very different platforms. Thank you very much. And see you next Saturday. Bye-bye.